My name is Leon Benson. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in the Chicago area, and I specialize in hand and upper extremity surgery. Oh, uh, common workplace injuries to the hand uh, include accidents that occur from the use of power tools and other industrial uh, machinery, like uh, punch presses or um, assembly line equipment. Generally speaking, the uh, common themes would be to make sure that the employees follow the safety guidelines and not disable any safety equipment, and also to take probably enough breaks so that they're rested and attentive and they don't get tired or overstressed so that they are uh, attentive to detail. I think it's probably attention to detail as well as following the guidelines for the uh, equipment safety usage. It was thought for uh, quite a while, probably several decades, that carpal tunnel syndrome was related to keyboard usage or repetitive stress in the hand, but it, it turns out there's actually been no scientific evidence whatsoever to support that. And carpal tunnel syndrome uh, is probably more likely a genetic condition where some patients are more likely than others based on genetic factors that haven't been identified yet to uh, suffer irritation of their nerve in their wrist and get numbness and tingling in their fingers. Uh, the idea that it's uh, caused by keyboards or related to repetitive uh, usage of the hands is probably not true at all. And if patients uh, find that they're stiff, it's the same principle that if you were sitting for a long time at a desk, uh, it's probably good for your back and your hips to get up and move around. The same principles apply to your hands. Uh, it's not a bad idea to stay limber to stretch and to move around so you don't get stiff or develop conditions that might be related to being stuck in one position for a long time. So generally speaking, the idea would be to um, exercise you know, all the joints in your body, maybe five minutes every hour, make sure you get the circulation going and get up and move around. It's probably a reasonably uh, common sense thing to do. Surgery is, in general um, is usually viewed by the orthopedic surgery community as sort of the last resort for almost all the conditions that we treat. Uh, although surgery is sort of in our name, orthopedic surgeons, the reality is that we generally look at that as the end of the road in terms of trying to explore other options first because generally speaking if we can get the same results or get pain relief or functionality without doing anything invasive that would be our preference. So in a broad sense, uh, for example for patients who have arthritis in their hands, usually the first line of uh, treatment would be using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication like Aleve or Advil. Um, using heat modalities, maybe doing physical therapy or stretching or uh, ultrasound or non-invasive uh, soft tissue modalities. Um, it also might consider uh, using a splint or a device to assist you in doing activities and partly to rest your hand and partly to help with the mechanics of your activities. Um, another uh, sort of line of attack outside of surgery would be to use maybe a um, steroid injection, which is like using a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, but some medications only come in a liquid form and you can inject a small amount of medicine in the area that's sore and actually get a very good relief. Uh, some patients with arthritis or other conditions will actually be able to go for actually sometimes several years without needing anything more invasive than maybe a cortisone shot once in a while and using some medication. Broad sense for patients who have arthritis, it's the same concept as if you're near hip is hurting you, usually the patients are the ones who decide because it's a quality of life decision. So deciding to have surgery for uh, painful thumb arthritis is something really the patients usually arrive at their own conclusions and it depends upon how much trouble they're having and how much pain is impacting their life. I usually tell the patients though that the surgery is pretty effective and it's sort of a shame to suffer another 10 years in pain when you could sort of go through the operation and get better and then have those years back in terms of functionality. Um, so I will generally counsel the patients that um, if you get to the point where you want to give up gardening or stop playing tennis or give up golf, don't do that. Have the surgery because you can get those activities back. Um, at the end of the day though, it really is a personal decision. It's the patient's decision as to how much pain they want and what their life choices are. And it's really a personal decision that relates to their quality of life. Now for other conditions, um, sometimes there are issues in terms of broken bones and infection and other things that we treat, uh, people who have lacerations and cut tendons and nerves. Uh, those decisions are sometimes a little bit clearer to make because if you're a healthy person and you cut, cut a nerve while you're pitting an avocado in the kitchen, uh, in this day and age it's sort of a shame not to repair the nerve and get your function back. So um, sometimes traumatic injuries and infections um, are a little bit easier to make a decision to have surgery because it seems to be more obvious that you're going to have something broken and fix it. Uh, but for a lot of the conditions that we treat that relate to arthritis and quality of life concerns, um, a lot of times that has to do with the patient's personal decisions. The best website to start with is the orthoinfo.org website that the Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons runs. Um, that's www.orthoinfo.org. Another place that's a good place to look is um, at the American Society for Surgery of the Hands website, and I believe that website's www.assh.org, mm -hmm. and uh, that also will have links that will be helpful with some interesting public education material.